I call this meeting to order at 6.33, and we'll start off with the Pledge of Allegiance. Yeah. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Okay, citizens comments. <laughs> I have a quick question for a week. work for the DRA on the budget. Yep. Uh, is that finished? It will be finished tomorrow. She just sent in today the articles to me. Okay, because they were asking about it in the budget committee was asking about it because mm -hmm. it has to be signed and posted by a certain time. Yep, I've already talked to Harry about that on the 25th. She just told me at 4 o'clock that I have two emails to Carrie about it. <laughs> Carrie is the one that asked me at 4 o'clock this afternoon to bring it up. It's got to be signed by the 25th. It's going to be posted by the 25th. It's going to be signed and posted by the 25th mm -hmm. by the budget committee. Because mm -hmm. yeah. you guys have already signed it, I believe. They're signing tonight. Okay. okay. That's it. That's it. That's it. Wow. Nice job. I think you'll make it to town all day. Okay, we have some minutes to approve. Uh, we have the first reading for January 5th, so put that aside. Our second reading is for budget meetings on December 6th and 20th, so we'll start off with December 6th first. where I had advised their rotted sinks. It's actually um, rotted countertops. No, it's in cabinets. Okay, I have a second the motion. Is there any more discussion? Quick corrections. Quick hmm? corrections. Yes. All right, all those in favor of approving the minutes for the budget meeting on December 6th, leave corrections, say aye. 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 Next up are Budget meeting minutes for December 20th. Any discussion? 
on 12, the, it's not an MS-22, it's an MS-27 for the building improvement. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, all those, in, uh, all those are the minutes for the budget meeting on December 20th with corrections. Say aye. 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 And our last second reading. Second reading, yes. So December 15th, board of meeting. Any discussion? All those in favor of approving the minutes for the board meeting on December 15, 2016, say aye. 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 Oh, stay. Three yes, two abstain. Okay, next on our agenda, uh, new business. We have a budget discussion of new business. Taking a look at our budget, and they approved the suggested amount that um, we put forward to them. Um, other than that, um, the budget committee has also uh, done everything that they're supposed to do on the town side as well. So the number that we have right now, the number that we propose to the uh, budget committee, or we put together for the budget committee, uh, is now the number that will be uh, on the warrant at the Does anybody have anything else that they want to add in regards to our budget for next year? I just have something. You guys live in town, obviously. I don't. Is there any word on the street in healing? Does it matter? Head's exploding. Okay. Head's exploding. I'm sorry. Head's exploding. Head's exploding, yes. 
It's not, not very strong reactions. <laughs> I've only heard a few things, and they were negative about it. But that was only for probably a handful of people. Of course, uh, uh, you say here. I mean, not well, like a town-wide thing. Okay. okay. Well, I don't think a lot of people are even aware. Yeah, so I'm saying they, they don't. So it's a small know. number of people, but they're very vocal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think one of uh, the ways in which the process was a little different this year was because the chair of the budget committee was quick to uh, do the multiplication and the figures and come up with uh, how many dollars this would add to the tax rate. We did that pretty quickly. Um, rather than just focus in on what the budget was, what the revenues are, uh, and I'm not exactly, although I am concerned about what the tax rate is in town, I'm not exactly uh, in favor of that being the best way in which to approach the budget process is to say, <coughs> is there a certain magic number of what um, the tax rate should be here in Winchester? I personally, I, I can tell you about what I would wish the tax rate would be, what I wish it would be. But, um, so I think there's a, I think, a, I think there's a real lack of understanding of how the budget process works here in Winchester when it comes to the town and the school, and what revenues are, and how that really drastically can change the number or whatever the year tax rate ends up being. So I think uh, that's what a lot of people are, are focusing on, and they're not necessarily taking a look at the final number that the budget committee uh, ended up putting on the board. So. I have some information on that. You guys had asked before about what, what other towns do for tax rate info. So I just updated the form that I had already handed out at a budget session. I added Hinsdale, King, Richmond, and Swansea, just so you can see the breakout in the last four years, how their town, local, state, and county have broken out compared to ours. We're pretty much in line. Yep, with the other towns. And if you were to look, so again, the state school rate is the <coughs> state percentage based on the assessment for the town that the town collects. So it gets added to the school rate, and that's how they get the total for the school. That's pretty much in line with everybody as well. I mean, Richmond's a little bit different there, but they have probably higher assessments. So. If you combine both the local school rate and the state school rate, versus the total overall. That's what this percentage column is all the way to the right. Mm -hmm. That's what makes up the total percentage for school. So we're at 63% or less <coughs> school. <coughs> I think this is good information. It's really good information. But you know, I also um, don't necessarily, you know, there, there's a lot of people in town that compares Winchester to say Right. And we're very, very similar to Hinsdale. Well, the way I look at it at the end of the day is, Hinsdale's business is Hinsdale's business. Um, I'm concerned about what happens here at this school. Uh, I've been a part of this school board for two and a half years now, and I've been a part of this budget process, and I know what we've done for the past two and a half years. And uh, I know Trevor has made mention of this uh, before um, as well. We have cut this school down to what I consider to be pretty much bare bones to account for fixed costs that are outside of this property that we can't control. And eventually, that has to come to an end. And Sorry to disturb. Can I talk to Alicia or Jim for just one second? It's important. Okay, good. <laughs> um, but again, uh, I think the budget for this school, this property, um, this year is pretty much in line with where it should be right now in 2017. I, I would like to comment on that too because I was actually going to say something similar to what Kevin had said and that is even though this is a higher budget than usual, it, it affects our tax rate, you know, it's going to affect my tax rate and everybody else here in town. <coughs> but um, it's a, I think it's a true number of what it actually costs to run this school the correct way like Kevin said, you have your outside costs that we have no control over. So we get the bill from Keen. It is what it is. We have to pay that. <coughs> We've been sacrificing for, you know, probably five or eight years here in town to try to keep the taxes low. 
And this is what it actually costs for us to go to Keene and to have a quality education here at the Winchester School. So, you know, this is finally, we're at that point. So, you know, it, it is what it, it is. You, you know, the townspeople can cut a deliberative session or whatever they want to do, but when it all comes down to it, um, this, this number is not fictitious. It isn't a number we just pulled out of the air and said this is what all the stuff we want to have. These are things that we've been lacking for a long time, and, you know, you, you have to bite the bullet at some point in time. So. I haven't heard anything. And um, I would tend to think that's because either people probably don't know the current tax rate or what it's going to be and or agree with the school board's position and the administration's position that these are things that are needed for the school and they're willing to pay for those things. And I said it during budget planning um, and that is, you know, to have a, a realistic approach to what it costs to run this school. Um, you know, these, these could have been or might have been more steady increases if they hadn't been nickel and dime down previously. And then it wouldn't seem so catastrophic when it happens when you suddenly say, these are the needs. Um, and I'll add to that because we talk about Keene frequently, but I would add transportation as well. Transportation alone is, what, $2 worth of our tax rate, um, right? Because it's about $600,000 in our budget. So that's about 2 bucks worth of our tax rate right there. So. Um, there are other fixed costs, not just our tuition, but that we have no control over. Um, and these are the, you know, if we, like Trevor just said, you, you have to take a stand and bite the bullet at some point because it's, it's not going to change. It's foolish to think that the cost of living is going down for the school and up for everybody else. As you can see, all the other districts are increasing as well. Yep. Um, one thing I just wanted to point out, and you kind of touched on it too, Lindsay, is that if we had made these changes over time, it wouldn't have been such a significant jump. Just looking at last year, so we returned 789,000. If we had stuck with the two years before where we returned 237,000 instead of the 789, our tax rate would have went from 1783 to 1873, 1876. So instead of looking at a 5% jump, we'd be only really looking at, you know, a 3.5% jump. Yeah. And that's because we had so much that we returned. So the savings, I know unfortunately makes the gap even bigger for the following year. But it's gonna also depend on what we return this year. Right. It's gonna depend on what the more articles are that pass and what we return this year. And we can only just be diligent in what we spend that we all set up next but, year. But with, <coughs> with that said too, like I've said in previous budget hearings and meetings, is that we don't want to, if we have projects in place, we need to do them. Mm -hmm. and, and not worry about holding back and, oh, let's wait to the end of the year and all this. Do, do those projects, because for years this place is, is neglected by uh, that kind of attitude. And I'm not saying that's you guys, but it's just, it's ingrained for years here that let's try to save everything we can and do the basics and everything else starts falling apart after 15, 20 years, you have what you have now. You, you then have emergencies that you have to fix that always cost you more money than right. if you had done the preventative maintenance in advance. Right. So I'm going to touch on that in my report today. <coughs> I think you're exactly right, Trevor. And I worry that's what we're facing now. And that's why I asked about the, the ethos of the town. Because if this says no, if you're right back there, and you kick the can down the road a little bit longer, it's going to get even worse. So that, that's when rather have something than nothing. And again, we hear things, we know a lot of rumors, go back and forth, flying around, but I'm relying on you guys. Because we all get this. I'm me. I'm right, I'm you, Kevin, if you can imagine. <laughs> but we Seven. all get this. We all want to stand here in this room. I worry about Joe Taxpayer. Sure. And, and, you um, know, if, if the towns go less a dollar from where they're at with everything they want, I'm guessing that's a dollar. I really don't. Two. Two. Okay. Well, ours is five, really just say, you know, that's a $7 increase. That, that's a huge number. I mean, if, you know, if you have a hundred or $200,000 house, that's another, you know, hundred and something dollars yeah. a month you've got to come up with. So, you know, that, that's a lot of money. Yeah, if it's $7, I mean, if you have a house that's valued at $100,000, it's an extra $700 a year. But if you think proportionately as well, so, Two dollars per thousand for the town on a three million dollar budget. Five million, on, you know, five dollars per thousand on an eleven million dollar budget. We're less. We're actually less of an increase versus the town. 
And that's also a ratio that's difficult or, uh, you know, to, to, to explain and to people. And you know, look at that, you have to be able to explain it. Because $7, if someone's over Jonies of the diamond, that's all they're going to get. Seven dollars. They, they don't. They don't care about all these things they have to do. Or on Facebook. Oh God, I hate it. Um, <laughs> or at the dump. Okay. Or at the dump. Hanging out with the town hall person. It's a. It's a normal thing that that you know. Yeah. They're going to vote with their pocketbook. Absolutely. I mean, that's just how it is. Absolutely. I wouldn't say that all voters do vote that. No, way. I wouldn't say that. Either. I wouldn't say that. Yeah. Well, large majority. I think. I think yeah. yeah. So we so, need to be prudent in advertising and educating the best we can. So two of the concerns I have with the budget only is that one is the Warren article that we have for capital reserve. Mm -hmm. So if that gets voted down, I have a plan. I was going to go over tonight and I go through my agenda. But you know that puts us back. Yeah. You know, it's, when you, especially when you're thinking long range planning, you're thinking three to five years out. We need to start saving now yeah. for the projects we want to do three to five years. And we have three very large projects we've already talked about. Um, never mind the short range planning stuff that I have tonight. Second is if we end up with a default budget, we do not have those dollar placeholders in place for like architect. So if you wanted to two years from now have an architect plan to do the third floor in the locker rooms, you would need to have the architect for next year's budget to plan in advance for the following year, right? We would be putting that dollar in those lines to transfer funds for the architect. So that just pushes that whole project out another year at least. So if we get the default budget, we won't have money for 1718 to move to architect. We would have to have the architect in 1819 and then have the building in 1920. Is there anything we can do about that now? There's nothing we can do about that now. You have a Warren article specific to that. You still have time to add Warren articles, I believe. I don't, I don't, I mean, I don't think that would fly. I don't know. <laughs> I thought that was really polite. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> so that's something to think about is if we end up with a default, how that affects the planning that we've talked about. Well, yeah, that's something, that's definitely something to keep in mind. I mean, there's a lot of variables. Um, people can change numbers on Warren articles too at the end. Right. So we, they can take that capital reserve number and change it in some way, shape, or form. So you have to keep that in mind as well. Mm -hmm. so, you know, at, at the end of the day, I don't like high taxes either. I've been a part of this budget process since the very beginning. I think the first thing I said was, what does the school district need, not what does it want? Because we all want a lot of things. My list of things that I want, I can sit here and talk to you all night long. But what does the school need to get to the next step? Not to stay stagnant, what does it need to get to the next step to become a better school? Uh, because I see that as an appropriate goal for the school district. Uh, if taxes are going to go up by $7, I hope the I, I hope that it gets out in the community that yes, the taxes here in Winchester are really are high, but you know what? They care about the school here in Winchester. Um, they're not going to accept uh, 30 kids in a classroom in Winchester. That's not going to fly in Winchester. If you if you want to, um, if you know, I'm not going to name any other schools in the area. You probably already know about them. If that can fly there, that's fine. But as soon as you come into Winchester, it's not. Gonna because there's plenty of houses, you know, we drive down the same streets every day. There's plenty of houses that are empty right now. There's plenty of people that are going to want to move. The tax rate does go up $7. Well, who's going to fill those houses? It's hopefully going to be young families, uh, families that are going to be looking at school districts here in the area. And I would like them to be able to dismiss. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of stuff. Um, under, we're still under new business. Under new business for what's our next board meeting date? So the February second. Second. Um, is are we having a guest speaker at that? Is that the plan? The sixteenth, I believe. The sixteenth. Okay, perfect. Um, under new business on the second, Jim. Uh, I'd like the board to um, discuss superintendent six month follow up from your review we did. Um, so I'd just like to have a, a basic conversation about what that might look like. Um, I'd really like the board that was able to give your review while we're still all here to be able to do a follow up to that um, as we move into the, to the next term. So um, 
so a new business for the for the sixth. Second. 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 Thank you. Um, the, the, can we make sure the board gets a job description for superintendent? Do you want anything in advance for the guest speaker on the 16th? Um, well, now that you mentioned it, um, I did I in contact with our new um, senator from for our district. His name is Jay Khan, and I've been talking to him about um, our budget process and some of the harsh realities that we're going through when it comes to lack of revenues <coughs> here in Winchester. And uh, I asked him if he would, you know, come and speak to us about um, what he hopes will change while he's in Concord, and if he graciously accepted my offer. And, going to be at our second meeting in February, which is on the 16th. So. You don't need anything from me financially or anything? Can you, can you, I mean, we already have it, but maybe the uh, revenues from <coughs> state aid and all that sort of stuff, how, just the, you know, your five-year stuff we already have. Mm -hmm. But maybe you just bring that so he can see us specifically. I mean, he may sure. already know some of this stuff, too, but I know well, at least we can show him how it's going down. Mm -hmm. You know, I know he's a proponent, uh, proponent of uh, fully funding kindergarten. I can't, I, as an aside, I can't believe the state of New Hampshire still doesn't do that. So for the adequacy, we only get here. half. We get nothing from preschool on half. I mean, that's a big deal, too, that should be talked about in the community. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we provide some additional education here in this district that some other school districts do not. And even in, in bigger towns and cities in the state where you think that this stuff goes on, it doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. And we're ahead of the curve on that, yeah. having preschool that's paid for and then all day kindergarten. And then we've had that stuff for a while now, too. It's not something new to us. It, and free breakfast and lunch. And then you read about that in the paper where other towns, you know, are cutting it out of their budget. And myself, I'm saying, why aren't they looking at these grants that, that, we, that we're able to get? It's another certain benefit that I haven't heard anybody else giving except for us. Yep. So I know he's going he's to touch on that. That's one of his big uh, initiatives for, for this seat, for this session. Um, but I, I expect him to say a lot of the same things that Molly Kelly said when she was here. She you know, turned it around on us and said, "Here, your town needs more business to offset." I was like, "Speaking of the choir, preaching to the choir, you know that." But anyways, I think it's good to hear from our representatives. At least one of them. No, I think what Trevor said is, is good. We have a history of the. Uh, funds that we haven't been able to get from the state of New Hampshire for the past couple of years, just as a reference point. Probably just most of the information you need to get us for us for our budget. Yeah, yeah you've already given it to us. Yeah. Just so we yeah, can just, just simplify yeah. what's in there. Do you want to have that at a time? I could say you can have it. I don't know. Yeah. Do you know if you wanted him to look at it before they can speak? No, I, I mean, you could email it to him and just say this is, this is a heads up as to what we've got. Yeah. So if you want to look into any of it, it wouldn't hurt. Okay. Okay, can we move on to old business? More articles and uh, default budgets? Yes. So they're right here. I make four originals. So on the Warren articles, the only question I had had that I was waiting to hear on was Article 6, which is the unreserved fund balance fund. Okay. And they're all blue. Okay. So, I'll <laughs> wow. um, so on Article 6, that is not considered a monetary article. So remember how the budget committee had said, you don't need to recommend this article because it's not monetary. That is correct. But I did take it a step further and talk to Stephanie DeRosier at the DRA and said, can we put something on the Warren article? So she said, it's not mandatory that we, we put something that the board recommends it, because it's not monetary. Gotcha. Thanks. So it's not, it's not mandatory that we, 
need you guys to hear this because you're signing for it right now. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not mandatory that we put something that the board recommends that article, but we can put something on there that says you recommend it. So I think last time, Kevin, you had said you want something on that article saying that the school board recommends the article. All the other ones say the school board recommends the appropriation. Mm -hmm. The difference being that this, again, is not a monetary article, so there's no appropriation. So you're good with that? Yes. So for Article 6, it'll say the school board recommends this article. It won't have anything to do with the budget committee because it's not monetary. Okay. And I did add the two years to the Article 3 for the teacher's contract, 2017 date.
questions, I don't know where else. Sure. <laughs> person return Monday. Um, there was a ton of stuff that got done. Um, we put two new water fountains in. So the fifth grade water fountain with the water filler it was up and running that day. Um, we were waiting for electricity on the elementary side that was up and running yesterday since we got a snow day they came in. So those are all working. The kids love them, by the way. It's yeah. interesting because the little kids on the elementary side are having a tough time trying to actually drink out of the bubbler. So they're like dribbling. So. Um, <laughs> We're going to put a little water mat down for a little while, <laughs> um, but they love it, so it's good. It's good to see those improvements constantly throughout the year. All the toilets, urinals, and sinks. We're putting a water mat down as an issue for It's not because anything's leaking. You worry about no, people yes. walking by. Oh, it's leaking. It's the dripping <laughs> face. It's a good idea. To put the yes. Water mat down. I thought it was Great. leaking, and I kept cleaning it up, and I, like five minutes later, <laughs> Can you drink out this water fountain? And one of the kids is late to Mrs. Henderson's class, and I'm like, okay, it's the kids. <laughs> but they still like it. One thing that causes leaks That's is true. kids will yeah. dump the dead water in their water bottles in there, and it's not a very big bowl. Mm -hmm. So on the other side, I say dump them in the sinks on the other side, and then come over and fill them. Yeah, dump, dump you really shouldn't be dumping anything down, even sinks sometimes. Food, you know, water. No, I don't water. water. There. So all the toilets, urinals, and sinks are up and running, with the exception of one, which is the boys' little sink down here in the gym. We changed off the battery in the solenoid, and it's still not working. But we had multiple issues. Like there's, there was toilets that weren't working, urinals not working for a year, two years. So I'm happy to report that those are functioning. We still need to do a lot of repairs to the bathrooms. The fifth grade bathroom, the boys is missing a sink off the wall and a urinal. You go in, and there's pipes hanging there. So when I'm talking a little bit about the plans to fix things, keep that in mind. I just wanted to take a picture and show you. You would just be disgusted, though. So. And that's something we haven't noticed. It's been missing since Don was here. So I mean, let's just put it that way. It's not something new. Um, the electrician completed all the fire safety related items that we had for the um, fire chief inspection. So we had a lot of, um, we didn't have extension cord violations, but we had power strips that might be hanging because the cord that it's plugged into was hanging, they need to be on the ground. So we were able to get those new outlets in place underneath smart boards was one, but there's some others as well. Um, still working on setting up some additional outlets in some rooms. Those are really just more of a convenience type of thing for the computer plugs. And then we're working on a lighting project. So we have some lights that are out in the back as well as the entire ramp up to the gym because they weren't caged lights. They basketball bounces, it's the light, the light breaks. So we're looking at doing a lighting project there. That's something I think the energy committee's been working on too, right? So, <clears throat> so uh, our electrician's gonna work with um, his supplier on that. Because we should be able to get some rebates. I and mean, instead of replacing the lights now and then getting the new type of lights, it makes sense to do that all at once. Um, and then the fire sprinkler, we just had a couple of sprinkler heads that needed to be replaced. I think there's like a five year replacement on some of them. So they came on Monday and fixed all those, and that was from the inspection in December, Christmas break. I do have for you the door swipe quote that we've gotten every year. <laughs> Just don't talk about the showers, okay? In addition to that, so you'll see on here there's two job descriptions. One is um, to add access to four more doors, which is the door swipes, but job two is to add holders to the fire doors that are up in the SAU. We put, installed that new door. It needs to be, it has to be on that. We have to do that project regardless. That was part of the fire chief's inspection. So that when the fire alarm goes off, the doors automatically release and the doors close. Mm -hmm. And so that particular door is not set up that way. <coughs> so for the job to install four doors, so the four doors would be, um, it could be any four doors really, but the four doors that we had them look at is First priority is the main entrance where the gym is, where the students come in off the bus. Second would be the fifth grade wing for the, because that's close to the playground. 
So it could be either one of the doors. We were looking at the one closest to the stairway versus the one in the glass hallway. Um, the SAU door and also the door down here to the dumpster that the custodians use that they probably did a lot. So those could be the four doors that we were looking at doing. Material would be 4163, labor would be 6,000. I did leave a message for Don, who's the, man, who's the uh, manager for Air Electric, to see what would the time frame be. Like, would we be able to get this done for February, or does this have to wait till April type of work? I don't have an answer back on that yet. But the quote for that job would be 10,163.84. And then the quote to put the fire door back into code would be $702.67. And it would make sense to do them both at the same time over here. Um, I did talk to John, um, who's at Amer Electric. He came out, and the program that we have for the for the door swipes and the cards is actually the right type of program for our size school. We have two panels: one on their side, middle side, and one on the elementary side. They each can hold up to eight doors per system, so we wouldn't be going over that. Um, mainly, the biggest cost in the system is wiring the door. So this is the first time we're wiring these doors, and that's why it costs what it does. He had said he just did a job at um, United Natural Foods, and it was you know, a $60,000 job. Mm -hmm. They did every single door. Like 17 doors, a whole new system. The stairs is limited. You can actually only have one user do the cards. Like you can't even add users to program other cards. And so Don right now is the person. He is the card master. Okay. Back on the capital reserve. Right now, I can tell you for repairs and maintenance, we cut the budget from last year to this year by six thousand. So we went from forty to forty-two. We've already spent twenty-two thousand in repairs and maintenance. Some of this electrical work is in there. So I only have twenty thousand left to do all repairs and maintenance for the rest of the year. What makes you the most nervous? So maybe we should. So have before we make a motion yeah. here to allow the projects, or well, I mean, it's it's one or the other. Does it come out of repairs and maintenance? Does it come out of capital reserve, or is that applicable for all of the projects? Not, no, not all of the projects can come out of capital reserve. Right. So I think the minimum is five thousand, however you tie it in. So the electrical is really coming out of repairs and maintenance. So we've been doing little jobs for fourteen hundred, twenty-four hundred. Yeah. This one, I would say, if this could come out of capital it's reserve, good. this would be. It would be the better one. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to see the plan first? Yes. Yep. Okay. What's the next thing I'm jumping on? So HVAC, um, I said that was the first project for priority wise. We had a preliminary meeting with um, the gentleman today who came from Maine. Um, so I don't have a quote for you yet because he was just here today. And then short range planning time. So I did a lot of research as far as long range planning, facilities planning, strategic planning. They really all tie into a master plan. Mm -hmm. So a strategic plan is really just how does the facilities add to the overall plan of the school. So if we are going to focus on early, early um, education for students, like we're going to focus on preschool, how does facilities help that? So what we would plan probably would be do we put the playground for preschool closest to the preschool rooms? So that's what a facilities long range plan is. Mm -hmm. um, it really takes more than just a community of one. So it'd be like not just even administration though. You would have your community, school yeah. board members, parents, all involved in planning that long range plan. So what I did instead, <laughs> like that, as I came up with just a short range plan, which short range is really less than a year. Long range is really three to five years. As to what are the projects that we talked about and when we would get them completed. So over here on the left hand side is the project, the estimated costs, um, the dates that we already have plugged in to have certain work done. The light thing would be the planning part where we get quotes, we figure out what the job is. The dark green is when the work would be completed. So already we've done the first two. So general and electrical plumbing was getting everything <coughs> running, adding all the electrical outlets that needed to be done. So that was completed Monday, as well as the two water fountains. Do you have any questions yet on the format, or how to read the paperwork? So the next two projects, um, and again, these, these gray bars that come down are vacation weeks. 
So the next two major projects that we'd like to accomplish is during February vacation is the HVAC cleaning and also the door swipes and the fire door. The next project after that would be the baseball and softball fields. We don't know how much we can get donated there. Um, I know I have originally gotten a quote for $1,500, but then Brooke had said there's no way the dirt costs $2,000 just for that. Well, and if you Google I mean, Earth or Fields. We probably get that donated. I mean, I would think Mitchell or Ashley would donate whatever material. We might. But then there's the work and labor. Right. right. Road detailing, I don't know. We might be able to. You said, what type of dirt, what type of uh, materials are we looking for? So if, if you look, dirt, you can even Google yeah, Earth the fields. Yeah. And you can see how much grass covers the field versus where you usually have the dirt from the mound yeah. to the bases. Yeah. And the infield, we don't have an infield, it's just grass. Yeah. So we'd be looking at like either rototilling that in or round up and kill the weeds. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we would have kids out there and pick it up, I don't know. Get to pull weeds out back. <laughs> I like that idea. I think we, I think we worked on the fields last year. I think we did a lot of work on them last year. I don't think we did any work on them. I think the baseball team. Yeah. Well, they might have done. They, they yeah. And then, but in two years before that, they got new bases last year. Joe was here. Joe, they did all kinds of work in the softball field. Yeah. Joe, I mean, it grows out. Just like the community center, they redid a field down there, and that's going to have to be re, you know, weeded. Yeah, around if you don't if you don't cover it during the winter, right. it just ends up like that. But yeah, I understand. So then after baseball, softball field. So that would be it depends. That one really depends on how much snow we have and when it melts. I'm <laughs> estimating early by saying March, but sometimes it's April that those fields aren't mm. melted. Yeah. And they try to get on those fields as soon as possible. So the goal would be to get it up and running before practice even really starts. Um, really, really have to do the mason work. Um, we spent, you know, oh, that money to do the roof, and as you know, the roof had some issues as far as water runoff, as well as the downspouts that were missing. That all they, all that did was erode the mason work um, sections of that building. So I talked to Marvin yesterday, the day before, and these are running into each other, and I said about ten thousand for that. And he's like, oh no, minimum ten thousand. He's like, and it's always by the time we get up there and see what has to get done, it's always more. He's working right now in the Parsonage building. He said, you know, we figured we're going to do 30 tiles. We're already up to 55. And that's the same thing that happened with us, too. So the, for the mason work, we have to do the chimney. We point the chimney as well as this, all the holes that are in that there building. We saw it last year. I remember. Um, preschool playground. It's really just the cost of materials. We're going to be working with the town to install the pieces so that for the equipment wise we won't need that but we'll obviously need sand after that as well and they can use some updates to the playscape that they have they we had some we had some <coughs> issues um, right before school started last year in school and then the two that i'm concerned about because it really depends on this warrant article i know trevor you mentioned you know, i can't put things off um, but it's the paving the back lot with the bus parking yay and the bathrooms on the elementary side I and it comes down to funds. I think the, the paving would probably be last on this list. Yes, it yeah. would. And so we have 196000 in the account now, which we still have to add the 50000 from last year. So that brings us to 246. If we did all these projects of 144, it brings us down to 100. If nothing comes if in. If nothing in comes in with a new warrant article, that leaves us at 102 total. So you think about what to do. The features, the paving, the and the boiler. To keep money in there for the boiler, just in case, always. Yes. I did come up with the fee, because responsible. And then our DEW. They're, they're the same people. Um, I, this is great. And I quickly looked at it and I said the paving, because the bathroom should be done. The preschool stuff has been there for a long time. I mean, we can still drive around out back. Granted, it would be nice to have it paid, but it's right. it works right now and it attracts in dirt. But you know, if we have to save something. And this doesn't include any work that we want to do to the Ford building. So at minimum, I'd like to at least replace the windows there. Like Two hundred bucks a window plus whatever That's windows they have. So this is just by June. This is the work we'd like to get done by June, which is what Steve was asking. Yeah. 
but you don't want to have a capital reserve run down to nothing. No. No. You have to really start planning three to five years out. What are you keeping in that capital reserve account, and why? What you was know, that so a long range plan. What was that? What, we put eighty-five thousand in the yeah. But they did not recommend it. I don't know. Change it. Do one hundred eighty-five. Sell a plan. Well, I was waiting for them to, to, to say something else. That they came, didn't. I mean, that came at the end of they can't everything. The number, they were overwhelmed and yeah. had conversation about it. And that is what yeah. happened. I think that is what happened. And I think that's what motivated me to say, all right, let me put it on paper. Yeah. Because a long range plan would sure. really be the years. You know, one year we're going to do the bleachers, another year right. we're going to do the paving. Like, and then you can see, all right, yeah, we do need to put, start saving now for a project. Right, because there are several projects that we have discussed previously through the budget process that aren't even on this list. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, there's the fifth grade um, glass. Yep. Yeah. There's the, the there's safety there's items. There's the safety. Yeah. And uh, well, there's the roof on the fifth grade wing. Yeah. There's there's always that other one that has been talked about. <laughs> that needs the architectural plan. Thank you. Okay. I did mention. I appreciate no, your sensitivity. But that's what I'm saying is. I mean, theoretically, you could easily spend two hundred thousand dollars a year yes. on doing that. And that's what some schools do. So, Banana actually plans a, a million dollars a year. He does two million dollars for each building, and then they move to the next building. And here we are, fifty thousand dollars. Or I mean, we have three, four buildings here. Four buildings. And like I said, if you ever go over to the fifth grade bathroom and you go in there, you'd be like, "This is what the kids come into," and you just be like. <laughs> okay. You get two so working sinks and then you have the pipes for another sink. And those two working sinks are cracked. I understand. Okay. All right. What? That's not even on the list. All right. Okay. What on this list here were you planning on using our line for? Yes. Um, everything except for the two projects that we kind of already did. So the HVAC cleaning, the door swipes, and fire door, those projects go together. Mason work, and then the bottom two. So not the playground, not the fields, and not the water fountains in the general work. So you're talking 10, 20, 38, and then that's Well, I make up. Well, we don't have our HVAC quote yet. I don't. He was only here today. Yeah. I mean, as soon as we get that, we should take care of that so it gets done in February break. If he can do it then. He can. He's already planned. He's actually going to be here February 20th. Wow. Right. If we say go. And that's the beginning of the week, which is nice because with the HVAC cleaning, I'd like the custodians to be able to clean up after because that was a complaint we had last time was you know, the dust burner was still down. And so if it's done at the beginning of that vacation week, we can have things moved up a little bit better. And out of the projects that we've already previously done, I listed below as well. The one that came out of Capital Reserve, it was the only one was the Thayer Group. Yeah. Well, I make a motion that we have Amer Electric install these door um, access systems on the um, Four doors that are ported in the two uh, new fire doors um, for ten thousand eight hundred sixty-six dollars and twenty-one cents, and to have that taken from the capital improvement building account. Okay. I would second that. Yeah, that seems like mm -hmm. a true safety item. It is. It's a lot less than it was last time. Last time I think it was eighteen. Mm -hmm. It was eighteen. Right, you say, you know, United Food spent how much to protect the food? It's protecting it's people. Yes. It's people, too. It's not just food. Yeah. <laughs> Is there any other discussion? All those in favor of approving the motion to spend $10,866.21 with Amera Electric for the door projects, say aye. 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 Actually, it is. Using huh. capital reserve. Using capital reserve, yeah, that's important. 
<laughs> when they came here, they're like, is this the one we've been on every year? <laughs> yes, that's the one. <laughs> Department of Labor. <laughs> Department of Labor, second re-inspection. I know Jim copied me on an email. Again, another email to the Department of Labor. We're still waiting to have a date. So at this point, it's in their hands. We do need to respond to our local fire inspection. We've been working on the small little things. But as I mentioned to you last meeting, we have some big capital uh, construction type of things that need to get done. So we have like those holes between the walls that were done. So I don't know how we'll address that. Or maybe we just have the inspection done and know that those are going to be. It, it will be cited for it. Right. Sure. I know. We put some things together. I mean, other things into a second form of egress. For some of I mean, that, that's like a masonry work anyway. It is. Especially masonry material that they use. So, you know. And that may be something when, we When they tell us where they are, then maybe we could go out to bid and. Oh, I know where the holes are. All right. But I was thinking when the mason comes to do the other that's work right. in the spring, yeah. we just okay. add that in. So the auditors were here January 11th and 12th for the 15-16 audit. In fact, they had said that they're almost complete and they don't think they're going to need to come back out. They're still going to work some things out. I was like, oh, nice. Great. That like, done ah, before the end of the year, before the next year's done. That is an example of how it's supposed to be. That's how it's supposed to be. How much do we pay for the audit again? 15,000. Time page 20. The town audits all of their departments every year. They have $20,000. Oh. So I regretfully have to announce that we have a resignation in the business office. Brooke has taken another position, which I've announced to the school. Mm -hmm. um, she's going to be working full time with a benefited position for um, DCYF. Right? Yes. Um, being a, really an investigator, so it's kind of a mm -hmm. line of work, which is really exciting her. So <coughs> So we lose her, but in some instances we kind of have her as a resource on the other sure. end. I think. Is she, is she, sure. is she, in all she gave a two-week notice. Yeah. So she'll be here till the 27th. She's not going to be athletic director. She, she is going to continue to be athletic director at least for this year. That's what I was kind of wondering in all the roles. Yeah. She said it wasn't going to work for her yeah. this year. But they're, but they need to hire people. They're, they're, they have Yes. Yeah. They're lucky to have her. She'd probably do the work of two people. It's kind of a job you wish that wasn't so busy. Mm -hmm. So who does pay her when she leaves? That'd be me. Unless Jim wants to do it. Like to do it. It'll be me. It's already been posted on school spray. In fact, earlier tonight I had a, um, a request. Yes. So that'll be good. Is it a full-time position? It's part no, time. it's a part-time position. We had budgeted for 24 hours. Connie was doing 24 hours. We was just doing payroll and accounts payable. So we added purchasing to that, but Brooke was able to do all of that within 20 hours, but I anticipated going back to 24. It depends on the person. Right? Yeah, how quick they can pick up how fast they work. So. The accounting system is not user-friendly. It's posted. Any other position? No. Um, that's possible. We'll try to get the best candidate yep. in as soon as possible. Uh, and then building aid review. This is the one thing I was thinking that since I know the letter to the editor that Mr. Khan had written was he was going to talk about revenues as well as building aid. I've been to a couple seminars when I've heard Amy Clark talk about building aid and coming back in July. She's given a whole history of, as to what it was. I can provide you some background information at the next meeting if you'd like. Mm. Um, really, it just talks about why they've talked about it now and why it's coming up now. So, we have the meeting with him. Yeah, okay. um, with Hinsdale's board. Exactly. I remember, they're going to want to add on to the school or renovate their elementary school. They're banking on that money. And they're first in line. Because the thing is, and this is where it ties right back into the they budget, they already did. You have, in order to apply for building aid going forward, if it even is approved, you have to have architectural team. Mm -hmm. So it, and we've talked about this at the meetings, is it really sets the less fortunate towns up to not get the building aid, right? Because you have to front the money 
for the architect without knowing you're going to get the building. Yeah. And that kind of, in the timeline, hinders you. You have to be the architect a year in advance before you apply for the building aid. So it can't even be, if we get this money, we'll hire the architect. Well, I mean, it's tough, too. With a state that doesn't necessarily fund building, uh, any of uh, educational buildings, or doesn't have a record of constantly doing it every single year. I mean, I can understand that, but. So you'd have to hire the architect the year before you want to apply for the building. You have to make sure it's the budget here. Yeah. And you have to have it in the budget here before that. It's a long range plan. The Hinsdale is definitely, you know, if you read the article, they have kindergarten, first, second grade on the second floor. No yep. egress. So we imagine first graders jumping out of the second floor building if there's a fire. Like, that's. <laughs> I mean, not sound like I don't even like the fact that we ex it, we're okay with the seventh and eighth graders doing that. Yeah. Because <laughs> you don't need to have ladders from a second floor. You only need to have ladders from a third floor or to the fire chief and the inspection. They're broken ankles or something. Along the jump. Calcane inspectors. That's all I have. I'm just curious about questions. No, but I was, I would. I won't take her hour long speech, but I'll at least show it. I think it's on the web. I printed off in 17. We'll get this little. It's kind of neat. Done a few <laughs> <laughs> Did you get it? <laughs> <laughs> no. Can we come back to the building and talk to the other one of us? Other um, instead of the fifth grade door by the stairs, use the one by the glass hallway. And the only reason I say that is now the only other swipe down there is on the far end on the other side of the cafeteria. And if we have a problem on the playground, that would be a real quick way to come in off the structure. Straight to the nurse. Straight to the nurse. Straight to the nurse. That way. Yeah. It can be either well, one. Can, right, be I talked to door. Mr. Chamberlain, I think I talked to you. Yeah. They were both saying yes, they're going above the stairs, but that one really is more of an exit door anyway, I think. It's near the locker room, near the locker door, which is why I think that. Yeah, yeah. but all of the elementary that goes out to the buses goes out through the glass hallway, and I would like to think that, that if that door was easy to get in, the teachers could follow the kids out to the edge of the, the building mm -hmm. and watch them go down the path. Yeah. Because I know Ellen's on the other end, having them walk, I usually, once I get out there, stay until the last kid goes out from the top end asking them to walk and stay out of the tree and out of the water and all those fun things. <laughs> and I would hope that if that door was easy to get back into, that more people would do that in the class. Yeah, I was thinking too, just from the spatial aspect of things, like the next door, the one where the stairs is, the next door would be done anyway. Right. And I have two doors in a row, it makes sense to. But the fact that you're doing one of them that's great if you decide to do the other one. And it really depends. So Amer Electric, they have some good guys that really know what they're doing, and it's really about getting that person here mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. give us the quote and do the work. So now that I know who that is. <laughs> does, does that leave more doors that will need to be done in the future, does it, or does that cover up pretty well? I think that's pretty much it. It's, it's oh, wait. Clear. We got one on the elementary laptop. That would be wonderful. On the other side? On the side of the cafeteria? Yep. Yeah. Because we have one on away from the other door. That's what? Well, yes. all the little kids, all the. That's the one. I know, I saw somebody with a key table we talked on that about door, that exactly. and I was thinking it was. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Sure. <laughs> Perhaps eventually. Maybe we, we want to get as much. Maybe we don't do the yes that you want. I don't know. <laughs> okay. But the four is important. Progress. Absolutely. I just appreciate it. I guess I was just thinking if we're spending back and forth or whatever, uh, if, you know, if, uh, if there are any others that need doing, you know, work. It's a pretty well space once we get this done. Okay. Just ask. Yeah. It can only hold eight. It can only hold eight. Right. Based on what we have, we have four over here and two over there. 
all, all four would be added to this panel that already has one, so it'd be five. Do I have three? I just get sure while we're looking at that, uh, <laughs> you know, that, uh, I'm sorry, anybody did anything different. Right. Well, that's why I asked about the system first. I'm like, yeah. or even give me a quote, do we have the right system? I'm like, yes. What you guys need and what you use. Like, if we were going to do every single door, yeah. then no. We have the wrong system. I don't but I don't think we need, need it. Right. Absolutely. If you think about what we propose and the location of those, it, it surrounds the school pretty well. Right. Jim, you ready? Yeah, I think so. Awesome. Uh, yeah. I, I hope you guys look good. Yeah. Well, you can do that. Um, I hope you've all downloaded our new app uh, by now. <laughs> I've got your test notification. Yeah, test notification. Yeah, well, we've got, we've got some debugging to do, to, to be sure. I think uh, Kevin's wife got one of the uh, tests to the staff. Yeah, Renee did too. I did too. Damn, I got my list. <laughs> anyway, so we think we worked out much of the, the bugs out. Um, and we had a chance, well, first of all, let me digress. Uh, we can update the numbers, we can put in a speaker Trevor, we can add as many numbers as we want. Uh, we had one, one number per family at first and then add to it, which we've done. Um, the analytics said 590 calls and texts for the cancellation. I received 24 <coughs> failed calls. It's not bad, but if you're, it's a, it's a good you're percentage, but if you're one of those 24, yeah. and I think 15 of those called me today. <laughs> <laughs> or yesterday at 523. Those, yeah. those must be hard to keep. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah it, 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 well, that's, that's just it. Diane gave me a few names today as well, whose phone number had changed. They weren't angry. They were just, yeah. They realized after the fact that the mistake. After they closed the school or saw an MUR or whatever the case may be. So we may do another test call. As I said, we can we can add numbers any time. Uh, last yesterday morning, yesterday morning it worked well. Uh, yes, it was tough. It was, it was tricky. We had 32 degrees and it was stable 32 degrees. Uh, it was a tough decision. We said two hour delay. And then I said at 7 o'clock, sticking with two-hour delay because we're not sure. About 5 o'clock, well, actually around 4 o'clock, I started getting phone calls. One from Mr. Malay, from Paula, from Lisa, even in Hinsdale. And they said, you know what, it's, we're not sure. And so we had on the side of caution. And I'm sure somebody driving a, a four-wheel drive got through just fine and said, oh, why did you, why did you do two delay? I'm going to tell you something. I get a phone message today. And some woman, I should have saved their call, but I didn't. Um, said that in another district, her sister's car slid off the road, so thank you for canceling the school. Whatever that means. I can tell you a couple weeks ago, a bus in Hopkinton slid off, off the road. No one hurt into a pile, uh, but people were fit. Why are you taking chances with kids? And you know, if I'm nothing, it's all about the safety. So, what not? When I left this morning, I thought the roads this morning were more worse than they were that day. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> we're, we're not going to, you know, as I said a thousand times, we're never going to apologize for keeping kids too safe. So. So we called for the cancel, and so did Rob, so did um, Lisa and Minadnock, so did Hinsdale, they never canceled. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so there were a lot, especially in this area, there were a lot, so we made the right decision. Jaffrey Ridge did once their buses hit the road, so first they did a two hour delay, and my son usually catches the bus at 6.35, so 8.30 he'd get his shoes on to go out when they called for a cancel, so once their buses hit the roads to get out to pick kids up, they changed their minds. Mm -hmm. Yep, err on the side of caution. Always, always do that. Uh, just to let the, the board and whoever's watching know, we're changing the app a little bit. Uh, you know, and the net app has different categories. One of them called lunch was eating time. That wasn't accepted so well. <laughs> so <laughs> we're going to we're going to we're going to I I, I, I loved it, but it's not a time. It's a meal. It's, it's, uh, but it's yeah. But some people speed, but you know, I get that. It's not a time. It's some, a meal. Some folks are sensitive, so okay. we're going to respect that. So I changing it to menu. No, I said, I said, I said you don't want you don't want feeding menu names that not feeding menu you that are just <laughs> aren't just menu. Yeah, that many times is pretty. Yeah. There was another one too. Um, so once I heard about that, actually, uh, Mr. Stanley came by. And said, oh yeah, we're upset. <coughs> this is this is what we have to worry about. But, okay, fine, fine. Uh, so we did. We respect that. We, we change it. There was another one. I think it said pack leaders. I said, well, if we have a problem with feeding time, we're probably going to have trouble with the pack, because that has a negative connotation, too. So we change it to pack, we do it to density. It still says it now, the word. Right? So, uh, 
Mr. Stanley needs game. to put uh, a real picture of himself. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think that's him? He, um, I, is that a magician? No, or? that's, that's Julie's Dr. Who. <laughs> no, it's not. It's Doctor Who. Doctor Who, okay. That's what we call him. That's wonderful, <laughs> but he's, he's not actually part of the school, so that was, I was scanning no, no, through. But he had that little robot thing at first. Like, you gotta put a human. You gotta put a human, so then you gotta found a human. Where was your school picture, man? Weird old I didn't like my school picture. Oh, you got to pick. I know. Oh, 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 I said, if anyone like, I said the the essay. The essay. The essay. The essay. You said I prefer their picture or something like that. But everybody else just gets. Fortunately, we have a very attractive staff, so it's it's okay that pictures are. That's funny because your your picture actually jumped out when I was looking through it. Yeah, it was. It's like it looks like he's coming through the camera. <laughs> I'd like to see a picture of you taking the, the selfie. The, the, that, that picture is a picture of my daughter and I would just won a trivia contest. So you cut her out? I cut her out. <laughs> 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 is this the one whose birthday was last night? No, oh, no. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, she was. Crop. Okay. Um, so the app is a work in progress. Yeah, you betcha. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, and I get some more news. Um, we're going to go live with our website uh, sooner than later, and this is information you guys are not going to have at this point. We, there was some information at uh, Blackboard School World, the other folks, and we wanted that information. We, we didn't get it out before the contract expired. It wasn't completely compatible either. We thought, well, let's see what we can do. So the contact is Can you open this up for us? Let me take it out. Well, I spoke to this one, who led me to that one, to that one, and then back and forth. They finally got back to me today, and one of those and said, oh yeah, we, we can do that for you. Here, we'll send over this contract for you for the next six months. Six months? I want maybe six days at, at best. Is that, that where the website was off? Yeah. Yeah, and so. Not because you know, we didn't pay the bill. Yeah, no, no. We, we only we, renewed we, it to December 31st. We, I know, there was a rumor about that. We didn't pay the bill, absolutely false. Absolutely false. So, so we're, we're gonna say the heck with that. We're not gonna, we don't need that. We'll just create a new one. I would suggest uh, we need to get a that website or a new website going ASAP. Why didn't we have The perception uh, is awful. Why didn't we have one? Yeah, uh, Steve's well, right. The perception is awful, and we're during a time of year where people are going to want to have a website. Well, it's not even just everything else. So by Monday, I spoke to the guy. He has to turn something on. He could do it for fucking tomorrow. And he sent the information to Julian, so you could directly have it up website on Monday. So will you put a push through? to alert everybody of the new address, or is it the exact same address? I think it's the same address, okay. he just has to... Uh, yeah, yeah that's our domain. That's our domain, okay. Yeah. So we didn't have the audit on the last website. We'd like to have it in the annual report. Because it's supposed to be part of your annual report, which we haven't had for. Yeah. We could, we, I mean, we should put them all on just like our minutes and stuff. Yeah. Right? yeah well, that's not, especially now. It's it's more things to show. It won't be 15, 16 then, because they're still. You know, well, yeah. But that's, at least that's that's have 14, 15 would be nice up there. Yeah, that's, that's, we have a chance now to really communicate well and real easily to it. Like when they're with their apps, they have it right with them. This is a great opportunity, so we're going to take advantage of it. So if you know of anyone who hasn't done what, please encourage them to do so. You did notice, I don't know if they are now, but on the app, like the newsletters are not up to date, like the recent newsletters are not up there. The last one I saw, I haven't checked a couple days, but it was like in December or something, but I just seen that the, new, the newsletters weren't up to date on the app. We'll make sure that's up. Absolutely. Yeah, because that's, that's the big deal. 16. You don't do that as a 16. You don't do it when you publish it? Yeah, no, so 23rd should be up there, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah so maybe I'll just do it. Yeah, yeah, just to say, so they have it. You said Julian might not have got it. Julian had to put them up for me. Yeah, maybe I'll just do it for a reason. When you publish it? I appreciate you coming. Uh, evening CAST meeting. Uh, CAST Community School together, a group that, that meets once a month. They had a town wide meeting at theirs last Thursday, I think it was, the day of the fall. Um, they feel it was a feeling of success. 19 people signed up to be on, on part of the CAST people. Their goal, their purpose, to improve the town, uh, to encourage more people to move in. We talked about this earlier today. Um, I think Kevin was saying like, the next step is a better school. Uh, there's plenty of houses available. What is it we need to do to get people to move into town? 
Well, that's what CAS wants to do. On the back of your page, you should have a list of what people responded to. Uh, same the main answer to the question. How do we help kids prepare for the future? What's an uh, Winchester asset? Uh, Three-way tie with Pickle Pass, Pisgah State Park, and the natural beauty of the mountains is the scenery around here. Uh, family activities they looked in. What would you like to see changed? So there is a follow-up meeting on February 13th from 7 to 8 here in the library right after the PTA meeting here. I strongly encouraged to attend. Um, CAST is getting bigger. They're getting their act together. We meet at Applewood all the time. We develop some connections. Their, their goal, their function is very good, very genuine. So uh, I'm hoping we can support them as much as possible because we, we both want the same thing. They want to work on the town level and to ultimately help the school. So hats off to them. The Audubon has a grant available, it's $1,000. Uh, you can use it for a trail in the back. We have a lot of land in our back that we'd like to utilize. And it, it's time again, we spoke about this last time too, land analysis. Possible uses. I'm not suggesting we suggest we build a giant windmill like they have in, in Leinster. I don't think that would go. But is there something we can do? A solar farm, it's something like we have lots of land. We've got to do something, something more. So um, we'll get you get some some maps. I did get the maps. I copied them. I didn't want to hand them off. Yeah, no. I had other handouts. Yeah, no. Let's. We'll take a the administration. We'll take a look and come up with some recommendations. Uh, what we can it's 70 acres if you think about it. It's almost like a big square piece with the exception of five yeah. acres chopped yeah. out. That's a lot of land. That's a lot of land. Mm -hmm. that is. A lot of land to do something with. It's just not that way. Yep. So we're that not going to sell it or anything, but we'll do something with it. With it. With it. <laughs> let's, build, let's build a couple of some revenues. Oh, much, uh, it's got, I mean, something. what's out there for, for timber is? Is it mostly little trees from the swamp? It, it's both swamp. Yeah, it's quite there's some big trees. Oh, right. it's 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 wet. Wet. Can, yeah, it's it's kind of close to this wetland, right? I, I, I don't Lumber know if it qualifies as wetlands, but it's it's pretty damn close. It's not like good lumber we lumber we can sell. But we have to do something. I Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Keene High School and House, I don't know if we're going to talk about this uh, during committee reports, but it is Tuesday, the 24th. We are providing a bus. Ten folks have been from as of now. As of Out of how many? Ten people or ten families? Ten families. Good. So that's, that's good. Uh, not a whole lot of demand for the bus, but who cares? As long as we get them up there. We'll still offer the bus. We want as many people to go as possible. It's imperative to get people. I put in the newsletter for tomorrow, too. Dead. I'm just being free too. If you have a middle school kid, to come up anyways. The seventh graders are going to be going to that school eventually too, so let's get them up there. Let's yeah. See what we can do. Uh, what else? Oh, yeah. Uh, Patriots Super Bowl PTA fundraiser. If, if, if the Pats get into the Super Bowl PTA, there's our gal there. Uh, pizza bar, salad, brownie, trivia, uh, score prediction, and some kind of activity we're planning on doing. Again, get people in. Fun thing, look what your school can do. What a fun place to get. No, no, no. What's that? Yes. No. <laughs> I was curious. Sorry, pardon? She said no. It's all questions. Okay. She said somebody was in the room. I do have for you a uh, football display if you want it. I love it. We'll just have to cover up the bubbling. My son used to work at a grocery store and he took it when they were done with their football. Well, this brings up another funding <laughs> possibility. <laughs> so, uh, you might make some money in that. Yeah, I don't know. Quite, 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 quite. Um, so, anyways, that again, again we're the hub of the town, get people in here, it's a fun thing, it's a unique thing. You know, uh, Super Bowl's once a year, let's, let's do something. So, we're going to. And then I end up bringing it um, Mark DeVance is off the board before I uh, did anything about it. We have two board members who do not be with us. <coughs> uh, Heather made it known, surprisingly to us, at <laughs> one of the meetings that year you're, you're not going to be here. Okay, so, so there's at least one term who's made it very clear. So does the board want me to start advertising this? Or is that something you want to keep lower for the company? So I asked Jim Tatro too when, the, when it opens. That doesn't have, he doesn't know anybody interested in like getting interested. Nobody has. But he hasn't said anybody. Well, they can. So the sign up date begins next Wednesday. Oh. He said, and it goes until February third. 
at five o'clock. I mean, just just my opinion, but I, I think we should put it out there as much as possible because otherwise we're just going to get people that are fired up about specific topics at, at, at a specific time. I agree. Yeah. I, I mean, I was right. planning on saying something personally. Um, Maybe put on the website. Um, yep. Put yeah, it on the website. Sure. And we have three openings. Oh, oh right, right. Yeah. Even though we, we have somebody who is absolutely running for his position again, um, we do have... But we have two, no question, won't we? That's correct. So I guess I'm concerned that we just put two out there as opposed to the three that are actually open, but that... Like we were doing the warrant. Yeah, that just like the warrant. You could even put out that there are the moderators up. Yeah. And that's, that's other than fact. Yeah. But I just wanted to be present yeah. in newsletters and such. I wanted to talk to other guys. I just don't want it to be perceived that... I just think we might get a preferential to it, we'll have a better chance of getting the right people, you know? Oh, yeah. I, I agree. I mean, you could put in the, in the news art, uh, newsletter just kind of like our Warren article is going to say, and then say that, you know, Heather and I won't be returning, but Kevin is continuing to be running again. Yeah. You know, something so yeah. people know what's going yeah. on, yeah. essentially. Yeah. I, I think that's a good idea. So, what was that? Because Steve, you're exactly right. We don't want to get to the point where. No. No, we want. Well, I mean, especially with. Right, budget time. Um, well, they open for 10 days. Yeah, and, and we want people to have a chance to consider it. Yep, yeah. Good. 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 And I'll just need to know a player. We had a, a what we had about five people come in when we appointed Heather. Yep. And I have no idea if any of those people are interested in running. Yeah, I'm just not a big fan of those bleachers. <laughs> well, the gym, I mean, 
Unless you move it out of the gym. Yeah. 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 Or even if you did, just going to be out. Didn't yeah. use the um, stage and put us on the floor under the basketball. We could. We could definitely go yeah. put you on the stage. We could pull that out. Uh, then you elevate it a little bit too, and so people can see you. I mean, a lot of places I've been, they, they do it in an auditorium where there is a stage, so maybe that's fun to try that. You had an auditorium? Yeah, we had an auditorium. I've got the 10 year plan. But if we, um, yeah. We're 10,000 away for the next 50 years. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what is that one actually? I think I like that. What is the format to look like? Is it both the school board and budget community both? Just us. No. Just no. Just us. It's the moderator, yeah. It's just us, it's the moderator's meeting. It's not, it's not our meeting. No more. It's the moderator's meeting, so. Um, but the budget they, committee's budget. Sure. But it's the school board's yeah. Warren Arts. Sure. Fair enough. And that's what we're discussing is the Warren Arts. But it's the moderator facilitates. Cool the board. Quick, quick, slow, uh, how much discussion. See. And then our clerk is there. I like the stage. There's a little. Yeah, I think it could maybe yeah. switching the room around might yeah. help. Yep. Well, Did what about this? Would we have a no, no, no. We have a stage. Stage. Yeah. That might be that might um, dissuade a few people from getting up to meet me too. Come in and walk in front of everyone. But the stage is good because it would be elevated. You can see no one will complain about that. Also the Sound system probably less likely to be walked on. We have it off yeah. to the side. Yeah, I think it's oh, so we could raise the, the basketball. We have that respect sign in the back. I was going to ask how many copies of everything you'd like provided oh, based gosh. on what you think you anticipate. And I don't need to know today. Okay. You know what the next meeting is about. So it's there, 40, 50 people? We've always made like 50 times. I'm just worried that it's going to be 200 yeah, people it. this year. <laughs> do 100. I don't think you're going to have 200 people. I really don't. 100? You have your usuals that are going to come and you may have, you know, 10 or 15 others. So for handouts, so it seems like lots of people are coming in. For handouts, we're only required to have the Warren Articles, the MS-27, and the default budget. We don't need to have the budget in this format. Although we I, have have, had I don't think I've had enough I don't know, paper. I think we've had, had it in the past few years, so. but we don't have that. Well, that's what I'm asking. What do you guys want? Is there any other additional information? Do you want that handout on the new positions? Do you want the Kane handout? Like, comment? Okay. Tell me by well, next meeting. Oh, we have one meeting. more meeting. Classroom counts on the back of the one that we had the positions on. That was how I handed it out to the budget committee. Yeah. Yeah, about do classroom count. Uh, deliberative should probably be under old business for our next meeting, mm -hmm. so that we can make sure we have everything covered there. Anybody else have anything for Jen? You can probably will can make it to that point. Right? Long time ago. <laughs> Let's see. Maybe Where just a little reminder. Remind awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Well, now? Um, so we've been working on map testing over the last few weeks. We'll be finishing up next week. We're seeing a lot of nice effort from students, a lot of taking their time, a lot of taking it seriously, and so as a result we're seeing some pretty nice results. Um, with math testing you get an immediate score, so that's nice feedback for them. Lots of teachers are providing them with what their score was last year so that they can see if they've improved or not, and we're seeing a lot of improvement. Um, and lots of kids scheduled for, to, to complete during the makeup session because they were really taking their time and, and needed more than they allotted 
something that was different with map testing this year is it was done in the classrooms, so on the laptops. And it's the environment where they do their learning, it's the place where they're familiar and comfortable, um, their teacher is there, their paraprofessionals are there, um, and I think it's making a difference. We're getting feedback from kids that they like it uh, for the most part. Um, some of the other kids have said that the laptop screens are small and they like the, the big computer screen. Uh, but we have worked out the way to magnify so they have that option as well. Uh, so that's something that has been different this year and we'll, we'll ask for feedback from teachers and kids when we're, when we're all through with it. Um, and I expect some nice aggregate results that I can share with the board as far as increases in math testing because it's looking good. What grades, is, is that the entire school or? So this year, typically we've done K through eight. Um, this year we're trying something a little bit different with kindergarten. Um, they find that early in the year, the results from math testing are not really valid because most of the teaching that's done that would be tested on those tests hasn't happened yet. It's a lot of the pre-skills that they're working on. So what we're doing instead is some checklists that are part of the um, map testing suite for primary grades. So they've selected a um, language arts checklist and a math checklist. So we'll do those, they'll be quicker um, dipsticks for screening what's happening in kindergarten. So we're gonna try some different ones this year and see what we like better. Um, and then they'll have the option of doing a full survey of map testing in the spring if they, if they prefer it. But yeah, we've done first grade through eighth grade. I heard really great feedback from being able to stay in the classrooms from, from my kiddos. Yeah, lots of kids have liked that. Yeah. That's a nice way of some of what we should have said, with how the facilities support the goal. We could have done that a couple years ago if we didn't have those. Yep. Right. We also couldn't have done that if we, didn't, if we hadn't spent a lot of time working on the connectivity and the bandwidth yep. and the Wi Fi access and all those rooms. So we really haven't come into a lot of technological problems. It's great. There have been yeah. some stalled tests, but that is one of the, the downfalls of going to the browser-based rather than the server-based um, test. And it's typically on NWAs and it's just how many people are on uh, their system at a time. So occasionally you click the next button and you need to wait a few seconds, but it hasn't been too bad. So good. Can ask a question on that too? some ideas for other people, best practices when they get to go out? Yeah. Yeah, so there was a lot of discussion, well, at a couple of professional developments that I've been to this year, um, Summer Summit, over the summer lots of us went to up at UNH and uh, had some conversations in one of the accountability sessions with some of their teachers and where do they do their testing and, and how often and what feedback do they have about doing it in the classroom and they, all, they were all raving about it. As long as your connectivity is good and you've got good equipment to do it on, that's the way to do it. And, attended a brain and learning conference in Boston with a middle school teacher earlier this fall and there was a lot of conversation about context dependency and you get the best results from kids when they're in the environment that they learn information in. Um, so we've been saying for years um, it's important for us for the teacher to be in the room when they test but they always came down to kind of the sterile lab that was cold because um, it's air conditioned and, and lots of kids were uncomfortable with the temperature in there. It's not the environment that they're used to, it's not where they feel um, good, it's not where they know their routines about you know, whether they can go to the bathroom or who to ask for what. Um, so we wanted the teacher there, so they associate with the teacher who thinks the testing is important and that they have a comfortable person in the room with them. But taking it into the classroom was another step. Um, so we appreciate having the laptops to do that with. Um, the next thing we have next week is um, the spelling bee on Wednesday, so classroom teachers have been working on their class Bs and getting the winners of their class B to uh, Mrs. Lander, who organizes that event. Um, so next Wednesday, I believe it's at 2 o'clock, uh, will be this one. one. <laughs> so I put on the calendar. So the school B will be next Wednesday. Um, and that's usually pretty exciting. We've got a lot of younger spellers who are pretty impressive. So yeah. the older kids are always impressed to see these second and third graders who are standing up there and confidently spelling words and staying in for a lot of rounds. So that's always nice to see the big kids cheering on the little kids. Are the parents invited to that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, okay. so one of my kids is in it right now. So oh, I'm yeah. really excited. Um, yeah, come on in. Sure. Yeah, Jim puts it in the newsletter to invite parents. Um, and I will put it on Facebook this weekend. 
So, yeah, definitely come in. Um, and then uh, an update on the technology uh, server project. The project is complete. Um, the backups are functional. We have a solid backup and a virtual backup um, that are in place and functioning. Um, so Julian's working on decommissioning the other parts of the server. Um, Tuesday of this week was the transition to the new print server. So they had set up all of the virtual servers and kept the old ones for, um, as the only ones visible, and then they switched over the new ones to the ones that were visible. So we had let staff know that that change would happen at 4 o'clock and they could expect intermittent connectivity to the network. Um, and it took them about 20 minutes to get everything done because everything had really been put in place and set up the right way. So it was fairly seamless to get that done. Um, so, so that project is in Exciting. I feel like we've heard a lot of, we did this, we did this, we finished this, and because this is done. Like that. When did we get the results from the smarter balance test? Um, what we have is a preliminary results from the smarter balance test. So um, we have some preliminary results. From when did we get final? Well, last year it was November. Okay. I don't know. I'll check with it. I'll check and find out when they Yeah, this been so. So November 2017, we get 2016 results? No, it should, it should be earlier than that. Okay. The whole idea of going to the smart about is which is similar to the math testing. So it's a spring test, and then we have yeah. the results in November. Thank you. Right. I was, right. so, so they did they did release the preliminary result, results in August, but yeah. I, I haven't seen any finalized ones. And so, Okay. They have to do that. Yeah. The attorney's bill is in there, by the way. I looked at it in depth. Thank you. Um, I really appreciate having the detail and Bro. with consistency. You stayed here to do that just for you. Well, thank you. Not you, but for the board. Because I had asked for it. The board thank really you. appreciates that. Yeah, that was a perfect level of detail. Yeah, I, I like well, I mean, you just talking to the bill. That's, what that's fine if, like. if that's how he's been doing it recently. I appreciate that. Um, it's also helpful because this year, um, this year 2016, um, 17, the negotiation committee had him be a little more active in the negotiation. And, um, you know, if that's going to be an ongoing thing, I think it's important to understand the cost associated with that so it can be budgeted for appropriately. Um, you know, right off the top, I came out with about um, $2,800 towards towards that. And um, so when I look at our budget, what we have budgeted for the next year, you know, I, I want to be cognizant of that expense being perhaps fixed, especially if we have every other year, if we have a every other year, every year. That's not going to be the final number either. No, so it's no. just the bill through December. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just December 1st. And that's kind of part of my point as well. Um, you know, when you, when you start benchmarking some of those costs, then you have a better ability to forecast for them in the future. If I remember correctly, if the article passes, um, we're looking at like completely redoing the contract. I mean, there's things in the contract that have to be reprinted. Yeah. Yep. 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 We really need that to pass. So it's good to have that information so that that can be a, a more consistent number that we have a, a better handle on that's not consistently overspent. <coughs> um, I will make a motion to approve the accounts and payable manifest for January 20, 2017 in the amount of $131,320.16. I'll second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of approving the accounts payable manifest for January 20th, 2017 in the amount of $131,320.16, say aye. 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 Excellent. I just wanted to report one more thing. Food service is 100% staff. Hey, oh. Get about that. And we, and we did have I'm the, like, what's my number one? I know. 
was after you. Oh, okay. And then the contract is all updated as well. Awesome. So, okay, so will they get new sheets? Thank you. Sorry, we're working on that today. We received it today, so good news. Uh, going on to committee reports, uh, we talked about the budget committee. Joint loss. Now we have a meeting coming up. Awesome. Where is it? He was hoping neither of us would ask that question. <laughs> it should have been the 17th. It's probably it's last Tuesday. Tuesday. That's what we're supposed to have. Two days ago. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to be here. For joint loss? I wasn't even. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, think, I believe it's the second Tuesday, right? A third well, Tuesday? Yeah, third, third, third Tuesday. We talked about Tuesday first. <laughs> That's the third time? Tuesday. Because again, we have to meet four times a year, but we're meeting every other month to avoid that. Um, <laughs> Is that what we were supposed to be? We can't meet next Tuesday. I don't have that done. No. Okay. Uh, next Tuesday, probably doesn't work. The 31st, there's a high school movie. We're talking to them at 5.30. The week before that. What day? Uh, 31st. That's a, uh, yeah, though, that's a, that's a home game. Um, and and I the struggle PTA with that is, is getting some information from me about a special event. We're going to be doing that. Yes, we are. Well, how about the 7th? Yeah, yes. <coughs> okay. uh, yeah, 7th is fine. So, okay. No, Tuesday. Tuesday. Want to do that? What is it? Tuesday, the 7th of February. So. Are we all set on joint loss? Uh-huh. At 3.30, right? 3.30 is best. Finance. Uh, I'm going to make a request that um, our at the Winchester School Board's second meeting in the month of March, which is on March 16th, as of right now, the Finance Committee uh, schedules a date to meet. Well, yeah, the second meeting in March. Yes. So after after the after the vote. So you might have a new committee. Yeah. Um, we're going to talk about new committees. We're going to talk about new committees. So we'll talk about new committees and we'll talk about a date for that finance committee to get together. And I would like to see us do it a little differently when we're talking about committees. Um, I would like to take some time to go through the committees, discuss what the commitment is to that particular committee, and try to match um, you know, some strengths with particular committees so that there's a, a little more maybe buy into each of those committees. So that meeting will be March 16th, yeah. which is a Thursday. Typically, I believe that everybody seems to get sworn in the next day on Friday. Well, if you're there when he does the, uh, well, the count comes down, he's where's you in right now. Okay. So the voting day is on Thursday? The voting no, day is, voting is, is, is March 14th. March. Two days later will be our board meeting. But if people don't get sworn in until Friday, then well, we have to want to have a meeting, which is our usual meeting day, I think you ask him to like we yeah, have something special yeah, for us. Or we can just meeting. ask the school board members to get sworn in before the meeting. He could do that. No, I mean, you can do it at the window. He doesn't have to start ceremony. Right. <laughs> Yeah, just I think, an appointment for that. Oh, I think he's work. come before to the first meeting and just sworn them in at the beginning of the meeting. Did did the time time yeah. or, or the person who put down it too. It's not going to hurt persons. All right. The Keen High Committee met, uh -huh. and uh, Jim talked about the open house, which is coming up soon. Provide transportation to the open house, which we're very, very excited about. We're doing this right now. <coughs> when those meetings um, are determined, do we? Maybe copy Marie on that so she could post them? Yes, absolutely. She has been posting, I think, a couple of weeks. 
Uh, legislative action policy. Trevor, we have to meet. Keep trying to do it before a board meeting. And we've been we have a couple of policies out there. We have a couple of policies out there from November that we really need to deal with and bring forward. So I was wondering if you were available on the second before our board meeting. <coughs> or meets at six thirty, maybe do six. I think we need more than twenty minutes. Okay. Can we post that? Mm -hmm. Thank you. We have to deal with it this time, but negotiations. Cross that at the moment. Yeah. Uh, the Hampshire School Board Association. Nothing, but I wanted to be <coughs> and maybe Alicia or, or uh, Jim know this. I'd like to be in touch with um, Barrett just to get an um, an idea for what's coming up for training. Um, there should be something. They used to mail it out yeah. yeah. on the website, so it yeah. a listing of the training. Yeah. 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 yeah, I remember this is what I was thinking about. Um, I, I, I would like to encourage when we come into March and new members to, um, even if it's not a, you know, basics of new board membership, even if it's just getting up there and getting a training and hearing some of the language, I think it's really important. So. Yeah, is okay. it that one available yeah. like in March? Um, they it, so. Is it you guys come I think it's another beginning. Yeah, we school year. Beginning of the school year. What's the first training? It's Wednesday, August. So this comes out at the beginning of the school year. Like, yeah. I think it's shortly after the election. Yeah, there's one. There's, I there's one of the spring. Yeah, there, there's two a year. There's one after the election. Yes. There's training all year, but this, what I'm saying is this mailer comes out right before that first training. Oh. I'm sitting in the back of the Okay, scholarship? Yes. Um, did Christy Frazier get a hold of either one of you? No, but she did get a hold of Diane, who gave okay. her my email, but she hasn't sent me an email yet okay. regarding the dates and the availability. Yeah. What she's looking to do is on February 28th or March 1st is have the scholarship workshop for the seniors. So they can come in and find out what's available for scholarships and um, you know when to apply deadlines and that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. so, so she's trying to figure out the date. I think that's what she's probably As of right, right now, those dates are available. We did get PTA requests. So as long as they don't overlap with the PTA ones I got today, Crystal card from Access has this team coordinated with the different person to get in touch with. We had a little bit of this conversation actually at our team committee um, when we were discussing that there's a lot of scholarships that end up with one, you know, or, two one or two people or not enough, and, um, and that there's a lot of scholarships available for not just uh, four year but also two year and also trade school kind of. Um, I think there's even some just like straight up cash. cash. So, nobody wants to leave cash on the table. Um, we should be involving as many people as possible and letting, putting it out there. I mean, some of these scholarships are in the memory of certain individuals. Yeah. We need to show a certain amount of respect there. Yep. We really need to get a better effort out there and make sure that everyone knows what's available. And she's shooting for Possibly May 23rd as the senior night. Do we have anything scheduled? No. Nope. Can we make sure that that doesn't conflict with whatever senior event they do? At she she Key checked High. with Key because okay, she was originally going to do the 31st, but that's the Career Center Awards night, so okay. she's hoping the 23rd works. Mm -hmm. She's seven.
Uh, professional development. We have a meeting. We have a meeting that will be next Monday. It would have been this Monday, but it was a holiday. Right. So it'll be next Monday. And we're working on a uh, Google series training with Keene State as part of our MOU with them. Yeah. Discounted with free trainings. And so I don't know Keene has been working with the Southwest Center at Keene State. We're putting together a four part Google Suite training. So that's this Monday, the 23rd at? Okay, technology. Oops, we have a meeting coming up on Wednesday, the 25th. Is it Well, they're not normally in the same week, but because of the holiday. And energy con conservation facilities. Reading on that quote from the electrician. Here's the call for. Yeah. What is with the new school board member? Um, is on May third. The new school board member orientation and board chair workshops. Perfect. What time is it? We just go back to the uh, February 28th or March 1st day. Which day does the PTA have something scheduled that night? Um, <laughs> you don't. Your PTA meetings are the second Monday of the month. Yeah. So but the February 28th or March 1st is, is either one of those days is fine to do a scholarship workshop? March yeah, because we don't do anything on Wednesdays. We're Wednesday. That will be the week of uh, Read Across America. I don't know if there's anything scheduled for that that night. I don't know. Uh, no, uh, no, I don't. I don't know if they would cancel that. They didn't cancel. So it might be the ensuing week. That was going to be the Thursday. It was going to be the Thursday, but now it's the day to cancel that. They had to change that. Change the date or cancel the date? She said it wasn't going to be the second. So it's still be there. It's still be there. So you can check with Mel. Okay, moving on. Sue's comments and Barb's comments. Okay. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> can I come in, Rick? Um, PTA had, had a pretty good meeting in January. We were unable to meet in December, so that fish back some things that we were going to talk about in December. January. We're getting our donations um, for the calendar raffle that we do each year, and Mel and Bailey are very good about organizing that, um, and that we'll do that again in March. Uh, again, it's ten dollars and only adults sell those. Uh, children, we don't let the children sit at the home and sell them. Um, we're collaborating with Mr. Lewis. Should the other team get in the Super Bowl, um, <laughs> have a Super Bowl activity. And um, I see some pretty cool events playing with that. It's not just come and eat, it's come and you know, have some activity fellowship again. We're building community bridges. Uh, I think it's been, uh, we're working on trying to get uh, some sort of uh, informative entertainment in. Um, we, we had a bully presentation a couple of years ago. We had a magician come in. We're working on that uh, hopefully for April and um, possibly uh, spring carnival uh, towards the end of May, very early June, kind of like, um, I think I, I, get the, I envision in my head, I know it's big right now, too big to do with this, this one, but my envision is at the end of the movie Grease when they had that big carnival, mm -hmm. all kind of, I have that in my head. I, uh, <laughs> we could do this, but I know it won't be this year, but <laughs> anyway, so we're working on I don't know, and, uh, <laughs> We have some other ideas coming up. Our next meeting is um, the second Monday in February. Um, we're working on also doing a, a dance in February. Um, and I think the student council might be working on doing a middle school dance. And we you know, said we would support them whatever way. If you'd like to come out, um, we enjoy having input from everybody. And I think um, we also have elections coming up. And, March, 
and in April they take the new officer to take over. We have the uh, president. It's not up for election because we have a president elect, but I, 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 have, I have put that out there. If anyone would like to do that, you know, that's okay with me. Although I really enjoy it. I'm hoping to get to take over as president. But we have the vice president, and we also, the, she resigned, so we have a temporary one. Elementary so is going to be doing that from now until elections is up. And then um, treasurer position is up for re election. So if you have any ideas or thoughts about anybody you know that might be a um, good fit in the lives of you know, those positions, you can see our um, nominee committee, which is Alyssa Hewitt and Jenna Richards, or myself, and we'll see if we get those names in. Oh, okay. I think I can comment on that. Do you mean in public or two? C. Sure. I I make a motion to go in a non-public under RSA 91-3-A-3-C. Uh, uh,